I submitted so much wrong solutions, now I have to wait five minutes. Hello, here are the guys from Germany. Good morning, Achim. Good morning, Thomas. Good, Good morning. morning, Frank. Good morning, Frank. Hello, Thomas. Hello, uh, Achim. Are you well prepared for today? I have prepared my environment. My compiler runs now in like three seconds. In the last days, this was a bit slower. So this was kind of annoying. Now it's all well prepared. Very good. So now we, are, we got three. No, one minute left. And Achim, can you share your screen? I can do so. So Achim sharing his screen. And we follow Achim. And it starts in one minute. So we got five seconds left. Three, two, one, go. Day eight. Treetop treehouse. The expedition comes across a peculiar patch of tall trees, all planted carefully in a grid. So one hint to being fast. Just read the white text carefully. Puzzle input looks like okay. this. It's a big row of numbers. So depending on these numbers, the top left five is visible from the left and top. Hmm. The top middle five is visible from the top and right. Has someone understand the riddle? Yes, you know, you have a patch of trees, you walk around and uh, look which trees you can see. Whereas the the um, the uh, outermost uh, line of trees at the border. So if you're looking from the north, that line, for example, is visible by default. Okay. Don't see the tree because of wood. Interesting is that you're looking directly along a row or directly looking around a column. And the number of the tree is how is it is its height. So nine is the tallest one. So, Achim, what do you think about? You reading the input <laughs> like every time, and then you using a for loop for the first row. Yes, I'm, and uh, as, as I hate this from zero to nine, I get the the height in number with a simple. Car arithmetic. Okay. So. Okay, you have to count all trees which are visible. From all the outside. From all from all sides. From up, from down, yes. from left, from from right. Okay. But each tree only once. Yeah. And yes, yes, of course. Of course. So you maybe you need for each tree an own hash to save them? No. This is I think this is too much. We make a two dimensional array and mark every tree which is visible and then count them afterwards yeah but then you count them twice maybe oh i mark each tree once and then i okay, count how okay. much i mark okay you, you you mark every tree maybe with an hash value or something else you give them an id i use a two-dimensional array because it's two-dimensional grid here okay it's a lot of off by one errors with my code so I have to debug for some minutes here. 
Achim, is your assumption that in every row is there is a nine? Um, that is only for for speeding up. Okay. If I find a tree that is height nine, I don't need to look further because okay, it's just a break. I cannot see anything beyond it. Okay, I don't understand. And what about the one thousand? Mm, that is just to uh, I, I can I mark I, I register every tree that I can see with its coordinates as an integer. Okay. To to make so if every I pump up x by a thousand, uh, I should get uh, to, to individual IDs to create unique IDs. Okay. Yes. So every position is unique. No, that's not it. <sighs> I thinking about a short solution like for every position you have only check the row and the column if this is from the sorted order and the reverse order the highest digit if one of these four yeah. points are through then you will have one point or one one three it's if it's the prefix or the postfix maximum this is the term so if there's before it is no higher tree then you see it yes yes so yes. you count the prefix and postfix maximums here so so read every digit in one position and then check x and y coordinate if this is in in one direction the, the highest digit but I'm not able to write down the code correctly. This is annoying. Yeah. So it's, again, it's a quite simple riddle. So we need to iterate from all four directions and compare yes. each position with the position before and count the maximums and so on. And under this time pressure, I get some funny bugs and I don't see where I got my syntax errors. Wait, what did I do there? It doesn't make many much sense. Damn it. So if there are two trees of same size, is the behind tree visible or is it no, not? No, 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 then not. If same size, not visible. Yes, yes, same size, not visible. It's 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 a it's a first um, description. The top left five is visible from the left and top. Yeah, yeah, it okay. isn't visible from the other right because there's other three with the height five. I'm missing something. Your code looks like a little bit complicated, Achim. Mm -hmm. So you you got a set of visibles. You have, in the visibles there are is it's a set. You have no duplicated trees. So you create your ID because of multiplicate multiplicate x and y and thousand. The thousand is not necessary in my opinion. Um, uh, in the in the in the in the row. 28, you're just adding visible without Y. Because it's zero. You adding... Why at this point would be zero? This is to count the outermost line of trees. Because but, they are visible by default. Yeah, but you miss why? No, I don't. And, and the next point is 
this is every time this first loop sees allows to see 10 trees that is correct i just confirmed it yes okay so this is from the bottom sees identifies five more uh, okay i'm modifying that I'm killing that, that, and that, that as well. So the outermost ones plus input size times two plus input. Hit zero length minus two times two. That is the outer frame. So now this will only contain the inner trees. To, to through many trees. This calculation is now somewhat off. Button in the matter. 1001 is this one. 2001. 2003. Yeah. Finding the five that that are visible in the inside, but uh, the calculation for the outer stuff uh, doesn't fit because this number is way too big. Okay. So the number of rows plus the number of columns. Minus two. I don't understand what you are doing. This shall calculate the outer frame of trees. Okay. Because they are visible as default by default. I'm not counting them in this. It still isn't there where it should be. Hmm. Uh, where is your? Which outline is from your test code? In the in the past, you have used the test code and the the riddle code. That is the the upper part. Okay. The lower part would be the real thing. Okay, but the test code is also wrong. Yes, but uh, there I can at least see that it's wrong. Because this should give a 16, not a 500. Ah, now I get it. Yes, let me be a rubber duck. This is a 5, this is a 16, and this is a... And this is a string concatenation. 
Ah, holy whatever. So, so multi to 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 add yeah. two numbers in a string. One plus one equals to eleven. Yep. Okay. Exactly. Uh, so. Are you done with yeah. the first solution? I'm done with part one and it might be that part two will be a lot different. Okay, Frank, what about your status? Still debugging. Okay. I know how it works, but it does not work. Uh. So in part two, you have to find a tree on the inside from which you can see a lot of trees. From the point of view, from the tree point of view? From the tree point of view, exactly. Okay. <laughs> Because they want to build a tree house and in the top of that tree, so if they look out, they want to see a lot of tree. So we would only need to go through the inner trees and uh, uh, look how many trees you can see from there. Tree sync score. <laughs> I believe the minimum scenic score for a tree is four because you can all, you can probably always see the neighboring trees. And we are searching for the tree which can see the most trees, right? What is the highest scenic score possible for any tree? Yes. I. <laughs> I would su suggest <laughs> starting with the number of columns plus rows <laughs> minus one. Yeah, for example. Uh, no, I I don't want to work with a new <laughs> two-dimensional race are tedious. I just use my previous coordinate system. be a bit easier is the highest scenic score possible for any tree okay evaluation would be easy Stores, values stream Frank, you got it? So actually, I got my first star also. Yes, congratulations. I was in trial and error mode, just typed some lines and tried it. <laughs> and at some point, it actually worked. You. Achim, you are calcul calculating a score. Yes, I'm going through the inner trees. Yeah. And uh, f try to find out uh, how many trees that thing can see. So it can see. So this loop would need uh, two cancel options. One um, when we re reach the outer edge, then there are no more trees. And um, if we are seeing a massive tree, then we can't look any further. That is for direction one. It's a very interesting for loop. X1 equals to X plus one. X lower than zero. Yeah. X lower than zero?
X plus plus. No, it's, I have to replace that. Uh, now for the other dimension. So I take a look too, that you not forget to change an X to an Y. These ones are replaced. That is an input side. Char at X is right. Um, X is uh, horizontal counting, so that that goes to the to the to the individual string. And Y is vertically, so that goes to the list entries. Okay, so X is stable. That's why it's looking a bit weird here. Yeah. I... Everything look weird. Sorry. <laughs> but if the result is correct, no one ask. And let's try. Haha! Oh, yeah. Oh, string out of bound exception. String index out of bounds exception. How can that be? Ah! Throw in some finals and you get compiler errors. Yeah, very good. And loop above too. And somehow another one somehow screwed up the loop variables. And given the example, eight as a, as a, as a maximum. So Max one, nine, six. Maximum of what? The maximum scenic score from the example. But 196 isn't right. So you calculate the right number from the example, but... Yes. That can happen. Yeah, this is very pity. So I'm sitting on my tree house. I can see at least the neighboring trees. So minimum score should be four. So you're looking from left to the right in the first four loop, right? You, uh, exactly. You're getting the first row, this is the first column. Y is stable. Mm-hmm. And you're looking at the first column, not the first row. The, the, it's, the, it's the first column. No, it's the first row. Column is stable, sorry. I think I've, I, I found the problem. What if... So, I'm in a tree with height, let's say, 5. My neighboring tree is height 4. The tree beyond that has height zero. I can't see that damn thing. No chance, no can do. do uh, so I need to consider my own height and I see I need to consider as some kind of height limitation imposed by the neighboring tree. Yeah, um, some other point. Do you count the zeros? In the example, there is, a, there is no zero. 
This, um, the example has a zero, but yeah. only here. Yeah, and I, it's not, uh, and here. And they are both completely ineffected. Yes. And do you count the zeros in the wood itself? If my neighboring tree is a zero, I can see that. I can look down on it. That's right. So if my treehouse has a balcony, I can look down and see its teeny tiny treetop. I can see it. But I can't see it if it's behind a tree of size two or three or four or something. But because then it's completely hidden. I'm, and I'm, I didn't take that into account. Again, again, so. again please. Um, number zero, is this a wood which is very small or is this no, 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 no tree? It is defined as a tree that, that can be observed. So, I don't get my car, car at x minus one minus character zero. And I set the initial score to four because I can see the neighboring trees. That is a given. That's, they are there. That's right. But I won't iterate through them here and start the loop a little bit further on. Right. Now I do it different. I initialize neighbor hit at zero each time. Okay. So I can see the next tree. Probably, if height greater than um, neighbor height. Why you break if you are higher than the own height? It's breaking if it's... Because I can't see any further. Yes, but... At least I believe in that that is the case. So if the tree is, if the height of the tree is greater than the neighbor height, uh, can increase the score because we see that tree. But we also. But do you do you count if it's the same height? I think it should be the same height. Probably can't see it. Yes, that's that's what I say. It should be greater and equal. Hate greater equals to neighbor hate. If if the hate of tree B is uh, the same as tree A be standing before it, I can't see it because it's too small. It's it's the same height, so it's hiding behind the other one. So you got your own height. The own height doesn't matter for this. No, no, it's it's okay. It it's important to look over the other trees or only see the four trees directly in your neighborhood. I believe there is another character in order. So guys, do don't don't do this in production. Yes. Kids, don't do that in production. That's right. It does not depend on kids. No one should do rule, this. The rules for part two are, seems to be kind of complicated. I don't get it fully. Okay. So how, how, how does this work? How a tree is visible, not on the edge, because there is always one of the directions zero, but on all other trees, the minimum direction... Uh, length is one and then we count the number of visible additional trees or something like this so you are a tree and you look around yeah how many yeah. trees do you see and yeah. what is the best place for the, the most trees you see no, no my first problem is initializing this counter so on the edge these trees have all one of this direction zero yes 
At least one, yeah. So, so multiplying with zero gives zero. So all the trees on the edge have a score of zero. So only trees in the middle. So now if the tree right to the tree I'm looking to is taller, then the count is zero or is it one? If you got a tree of height one and surrounded by trees of height two, then the scores are all one or is the scores uh, zero? The score should be four because you can see four trees. Yeah, but it's multiplying the four values. One uh, times one times one times one is one, not four. I don't get the zero. Um, it's multiplying. Oh. Three scenic score is multiplying, yeah? The four Ooh. things. So, but if we see one tree, it's one, okay? Frank, thank you for that. I didn't notice that. I thought it was a simple addition. No, you confused me, guys. I read about a scenic Welcome score. Welcome to the club. <laughs> so it's an implementation problem. You get to, you have to get the implementation right. The problem itself is not that complicated. But I submitted so much wrong solutions. Now I have to wait five minutes. I can talk to you. Mm. Oh. Times score two, times score three, times score four. Only producing four in the example that uh, that isn't right. an off by one problem because you need to kill all off by one bucks and then you got a solution maybe this isn't required after all so i just comment the increment out for that one and maybe so this gives this is now back to eight where it should be we try submitting that one ah that's okay. it Congratulations. So this was completely bonkers. Congratulations. And um, I, I got a small lesson learned. Um, we should read the text uh, very carefully. Yes. Ex and um, uh, not only about the, 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 the white text, but um, the white text uh, very carefully. But okay, <laughs> then congratulations, Achim. Can you explain me your your um, solution and um, how long did you do this? So uh, for the timing, part one, uh, 29, 29 minutes. Yes. Part two, fifty four, and the rank five thousand. Not so glorious. Yes, but under ten thousand. Yes. Yes. Okay. Then let's take a look into your solution. So um, using a test input uh, yes. has proven uh, useful today again. Can we go a little bit higher? Not not every line, um, just because what is the idea into your code? Yeah, um, for the first part, um, the question was how many trees of that piece of forest can be seen from the outside. So the outermost row, so the outer frame is visible by default because they are the edge. Uh, 
which is easy to calculate. Uh, you take the number of lines, you, you take the, the number of characters in a line. So you, you need to subtract two because uh, otherwise you would count the corners twice. So you calculate them separately. And uh, and add that up. So that is the size of the of the outer frame. Mm -hmm. And you need the trees in inside. I produced four 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 loops, essentially doing the same from every direction because yeah. Uh, It's, it seemed to be easier and faster at the moment to do that. In production, don't do that. And you, you, you're starting um, at position one because you have counted the zero position, right? Exactly. So I only need to look on, onto the inner trees. Yes. But is, is there a difference if you're starting at zero and not counting the frame? Uh, you can do that and uh, with uh, at first I did that but uh, I got some crazy result and uh, didn't know why okay. there were two trees missing so so your first part is split into two two parts one part is counting um, as a, the, the frame so all all, all um, trees on the edge and the second part is counting um, the trees inside um, the the wood. Okay. Whereas uh, the inner trees, I uh, and some point... discover first, and then add the the frame later on. Okay. But... You put them into a, into a set to have no duplicated um, trees. Um, what about the thousand? Why is the um... thousand important? The coordinates within this forest are both smaller than 1,000. I could have used 10,000 or 100,000. It doesn't matter. Just big enough to, to get those two values separated so that you can say, okay, I add that and that. You can see that here. So this would be 2001 would be the tree at X2 and Y1. Yeah. If the tree grows bigger, that you can have coordinates uh, with value uh, 1,000, you you have you need to increase uh, the factor. Okay. To to keep that separated. Okay. It's just an arbitrary value that is hopefully large enough. Then um, jump to the to the um, second riddle. How you solve this? For the second part. Uh, The idea is when, if we have the scenic scores of uh, of the individual trees, then we can stream through the result. We don't we don't need the co coordinates there. Again, this these are the coordinates. This is a scenic score. Yeah. So we only need to go through the values of the map and. Uh, The trees on the edge because the scenic score is zero because on at least one side you look out into the desert or something. They are not covered at all. Yeah. So we go through the values uh, and uh, just and with a reduce method um, we look for the maximum value. Okay. And this produces an optional and putting out an optional leads to the word optional being printed out. Yeah. So if you need the value, you would need then need uh, something like Get. or else zero or something. Yeah. Doesn't matter. And then um, it looks a, bit, a little bit prettier. Okay. Thank you, Achim. Interesting solution. Okay. Um, thank you, guys. Congratulations, Achim. Ne? Much luck to you, Frank, to find your solution. And we see us tomorrow again, six o'clock. I'll be there. Thanks a lot. Have a nice day. You Till too. tomorrow, have a nice day. Frank, better luck tomorrow. <laughs>